what's going on right now, and Brother uh, Umar is definitely coming at coming at that from an educational perspective, which is something that our youth really need to um, have a better understanding. And our, uh, as parents, we need to have a better understanding of for our youth. But without further ado, y'all give it up for Brother Umar Abdullah Johnson. <laughs> Johnson. I'm a psychologist, an educator, political scientist, great, 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 great grandnephew to Frederick Douglass. Wow. And today we're going to talk about special education, psychotropic medication, homosexualization, incarceration, and extermination. There's five stages that this government has set up to destroy every black man walking on earth, but particularly here in the United States. The first one is miseducation. It's also the most important one. Because if they succeed here, the subsequent four steps become a whole lot more easier to conceive of. Miseducation has three stages, or three primary goals. The first is to teach the black man to hate himself. The second is to teach him to love white people. And the third is to effeminize or homosexualize him. There's no way you can understand the disruptive behavior disorder movement against black boys if you don't understand the goal of homosexualization. Black boys who refuse to be effeminized or homosexualized are almost in all cases diagnosed with conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder. Conduct disorder and oppositional defiant disorder are disorders of black men who refuse to join the American social order. ADHD does not really stand for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It really stands for the absence of the daddy from the home disorder. <laughs> the government locks up the men, leave the women alone to raise boys. And as a result of that, discipline lacks. When discipline lacks and when the father isn't there, children go to school looking for the emotional love from their father that they're not getting. They seek it out from their teachers and principals and guidance counselors. The same thing happened when we were young. But back then, psychology didn't turn it into a $45 billion a year industry. And so no Adderall, Prozac, Cycler, Depakote, Paxil, the list goes on. They're pushing drugs, but drugs don't cure. Drugs create more problems than they solve. The first thing you have to understand about the institution of psychology is that it's one of the most important in the entire science of white supremacy. Psychology is key. Because psychology is the only science that can make up disorders out of the clean blue sky yes. and make you accept them as real. Every psychological diagnosis is a professional opinion. There is no test I can give you to tell you if your child has ADHD. There's no test I can give you to tell if you're truly depressed or not. These are socially constructed labels created to fulfill a social end. In slavery, they used to diagnose enslaved Africans with drapetitude, excuse me, nigritude and drapetomania. Drapetomania was a disorder that was diagnosed by a white psychologist named Dr. Samuel Cartwright in the southern part of the United States. Drapetomania was a disease that led the slave to believe that he had a right to be free. You can look it up. Actual psychiatric diagnosis. Drapetomania. And guess what the cure was? The cure for the psychiatric condition of drapetomania was to whip the living hell out of the slave. So every escaped slave was diagnosed with drapetomania. Benjamin Rush, who signed the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Rush used to diagnose, he was also the first chair of the University of Pennsylvania um, School of Medicine. He used to diagnose slaves with a disease called nigritude. Nigritude was a disease that rendered the brain totally useless. The number one symptom of nigritude was black skin. He justified, he actually gave forth the scientific basis for segregation by saying that if white people rubbed up against black people, they could catch nigritude as well. Okay? His face is on the back of the DSM today. It's right here. Benjamin Rush, the first president of the American Psychiatric Association who diagnosed black people with drapetomania. His face is still on the back of the book today. 
because psychology is still in the business of taking behaviors that black people engage in that are not of interest to the white social order and patho pathologizing them. That's what they do with ADHD. They take normal African boy behavior and call it a disease. Wow. But they'll take homosexuality, which was a disorder up until 1973, and now tell you it's normal. Why is it that homosexuality was illegal for all of American history until 1973? It was in this book until 73. They took it out in 73, 37 years ago. Why? As a population control tool to teach black children to cohabitate with people of like gender. If you do that, you split the population in half. AIDS is working, but it ain't working fast enough. Mass incarceration is working, but it ain't working fast enough. They needed something more effective. What can be more effective than convincing black school girls to have sex with other black girls for the rest of their life? If you do that, you eliminate the need for babies altogether. Stop letting people suck you into the nature-nurture debate. It's not about nature or nurture. It's about racial extermination. It is no coincidence that homosexuality became normal in 1973, the same year the first documented cases of HIV AIDS surfaced. It's all related. World Health Organization gave homosexuals, excuse me, yes, homosexuals in Los Angeles and New York City a smallpox vaccination. Within five years, every homosexual who was given a smallpox vaccination came up HIV positive. How is it that a disease that was originally championed as a disease of white gay males became the number one killer for black women on the face of the earth? Because it was about you the whole time. It was about us the whole time. So now homosexuality being pushed through the Obama camp. That's his domestic agenda. Every president has two agendas, an international and a domestic. An international and a domestic. Obama's international is AFRICOM, to subdue Africa so the white Western corporate giants can come in and rape the rest of the resources. That's his international agenda. His domestic agenda is to make homosexuality the modus operandi in the black community by the time he leaves office. And they're doing it. Homosexuality is the new civil rights. Mm. A white child could call your child an N-word in school. They won't get expelled. Let your child say something to a homosexual child. You get expelled from school. It's the new civil right. That's right. That's right. And no, it is not your business whether or not the school teacher is gay or lesbian. You don't have a right to know that because they can't get discriminated against. <clears throat> At our historically black colleges and universities, you have brothers who cross-dress now. And the single brothers who don't want to be a roommate to a brother who's cross-dressing cannot request a change of roommate just because he is in a room with a cross-dressing black male. That's called sexual harassment discrimination. You can be kicked out of college for that. That's right. So homosexuality is taking over the black schools, it's taking over the black community, it's taking over the public schools, and it's all in the name of racial extermination. In 1972, the Rockefeller World Population Council and Planned Parenthood International said that homosexuality had to become a normal, accepted mode of behavior. In 73, the American Psychiatric Association had its annual convention where they voted to take homosexuality out of the DSM-IV. 1974, Secretary Henry Kissinger pins the National Security Memorandum in 1974, and in that he recommended the use of sexual education as a tool to reduce the black population. What he did not mention was that sexual education was really a code word for homosexual education. And in 1975, you get special education. Special education was started in response to the Brown versus Board of Education decision of 19... 54, Supreme Court said you couldn't use race to segregate amongst children. So white racist scientists had to come up with a new way to keep the black kids away from the white kids because you couldn't use skin color. So they came up with, in 54, mentally gifted. Mentally gifted. The mentally gifted movement was originally a racist movement that sought to resegregate black kids from white kids. You couldn't use skin color, so now you would simply say the white kids are too smart to be in the same class with these dumb Negroes problem was it didn't work because a lot of the white kids weren't smart at all. So 20 years later, while the civil rights bill was being rushed through Congress in 1963, a white psychologist in Chicago came up with the learning disability. Let me give you the definition of the learning disability. 
because most black kids who are receiving inferior education, which is all special ed is, inferior education, are receiving it because they were classified with, by someone with a learning disability. A learning disability is the failure on part of a child with normal intelligence to learn a scholastic skill. Let me say it again. A learning disability is the failure of a child with normal intelligence to learn a scholastic skill. Now I want you to cut off your Willie Lynch chip and I want you to cut your African mind on. What's wrong with that definition? It's paradoxical. It's incoherent. It's a contradiction in it. If my son has normal intelligence, how is it possible for him not to be able to learn how to read, not to be able to learn how to write, not to be able to learn how to do math? Does he have a learning disability? Or does the teacher have a teaching disability? Who's really at fault here? And why is it we never hear anybody talk about teachers, improperly trained teachers, white, racist, middle-class female teachers who don't even care about the kids they teach? And why is it that we as a black community assume that it's the child's fault when they don't learn something? Do you know that the American public school teacher is the only professional in this world who cannot be fired for doing a poor job? Yeah. When the last time you ran into a white female teacher who was fired for not being a good teacher? You ain't never met one, and you never will. Too <laughs> The central problem of black people in America, whether it's education, economics, politics, or anything else, is that you refuse to accept the fact that you are trying to join a system that was absolutely nothing to do with you. And you're forcing your children to deal with the same hell because you have a love affair with your abuser. Point blank period. And that's the central issue. We built America. You built the whole world. Stop using that excuse. It ain't because you built America. It's because you love the white man. You love his wife. You love his books, you love his schools, you love his woman, you love his hair, you love everything about him, and you don't want to leave him. And he knows this. And that's what's going to make extermination so much more easy on his behalf. Because you're the only race in this country who don't expect this country to ever fall. Everybody else knows the fall is coming except the slave. Because for as long as you know, he's always been your master. And you do not want to part with him. Post-traumatic slavery disorder. Hello. Hello. I could care less how you eat. I could care less who you pray to. I care how you think. Because a vegetarian house nigga is still a house nigga. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. And I'm going to be crystal clear about that. Okay? Pan-Africanism, we don't get into all that other stuff. It's important. But ultimately, it's how you think. Because if you don't think with the best interests of your people, I want you to eat all the cholesterol you can get so you can get the hell out the way so we can take care of our business. Saving sellouts is long gone. Yeah. And we got to recognize that everybody is not going to come along for the struggle. Mm -hmm. That's another mistake that we make. One of the best decisions that you have to be able to engage in is being able to discriminate amongst those who can be saved and those who got to be let go. Because if you try to save the right people, they will destroy the whole movement because some of us are absolutely committed to the furtherance of white supremacy. Mm -hmm. The black aristocracy. The elitist black clique, some ministers, some national black so-called civil rights leaders, some business owners, some politicians, some TV personalities. Their job is to do what? Stand between us and the power structure. Their job is to broker deals with you to keep you silent while you die. And you call them your leaders and you wonder why you ain't doing no better now than you was doing when Dr. King got killed. Because your average leader is a hustler and a pimp and a multi-millionaire and he is not willing to separate from his riches for your benefit. Mm -hmm. But you so damn stupid, every time you have a march or an event or a lecture, you go running behind and worshiping and he ain't done nothing for you but collect money for giving you a good speech. You deserve to be hoodwinked if you keep falling for that. Mm -hmm. You deserve it. Because you're the only people who don't hold your leaders accountable. Mm -hmm. You don't hold nobody accountable. You could come into the black community, kill somebody, go get saved, come back, and start all over again. <laughs> That's right. Eddie Long doing it right now. He got saved all over again and probably molesting somebody else, boy, right now in the name of a white Christ. Yeah. <laughs> in special education, you got 13 disabilities. You got mental retardation. 
you got emotional disturbance, you got autism, you got the specific learning disability. Can we get another color? Another color. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we got another color. If you don't, I got one. Thank you. Thank you. Mental retardation, emotional disturbance, autism, specific learning disability. Number five, other health impairment, and in parentheses, I'm going to put ADHD. We're going to come back to that in a moment. Because now you can fill black boys in special education because they're taking medicine. Couldn't do that before 2000. You can do it now. Okay? ADHD is not a special ed diagnosis. ADHD is a mental disorder. ADHD comes out of this book. Clinical psychologists use this book. This book has no place in school. But guess what? The white folks said, well, guess what? If we can get their kid diagnosed with ADHD outside of the school, then we should allow them to come into the school with that report from the clinical psychologist. And with that report, we should allow them to also get a miseducation after they got a psychotropic medication. We'd have lost our damn minds. That's it. <laughs> and because we don't want to raise our children, we let white folks raise them. And they don't care the last thing about your son or your daughter. All they're looking to do is to make a quick buck. Everything is about money. ADHD is about money. Special ed is about money. Psychotherapy is about money. The evaluation is about money. This ain't about mental health. It's about the financial health of middle class white people and some Negroes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Number six, speech and language impairment. Number seven, orthopedic impairment. Number eight, traumatic brain injury. Number nine, deafness. Ten, blindness. 11, a child who is deaf and blind together. 12, multiple disabilities. 13, and it just slipped my mind. What was 13? Developmental delay. Hold on, where's my hearing impairment? Speech and language impairment, orthopedic impairment, impairment traumatic brain injury, deafness, blindness, deafness and blindness, multiple disabilities. Your okay, my hearing impairment. That's not a special ed category. Your IDMI is your intellectually disabled mild and moderate. And That's here. Uh, hearing impairment. A good looking on that. You sharp over there. <laughs> hearing impairment. And then I'm going to put developmental delay with a parenthesis. Okay. Mental retardation, emotional disturbance, autism, speech. Specific learning disability, other health impairment, speech and language impairment, orthopedic impairment, traumatic brain injury, a deaf child, a blind child, a child who's deaf and blind, a child with multiple disabilities, a child with a hearing impairment, or a child with a developmental delay. Developmental delay is a label you only use on children primarily from ages 3 to 5. It's a preschool diagnosis. That's when you suspect that the child is delayed verbally or intellectually, or you suspect autism or mental retardation in the preschool years then they can get service through the intermediate unit. That's a preschool diagnosis. These are the sweet 13. These are the only 13. These are the special ed diagnoses. They come from the federal government. Each state has its own special ed regulations, but everyone must follow the law as laid down in Washington, D.C. There's only 13 special ed labels. I want to make this clear because y'all lump all psychology into one and you got to separate school psychology, which is this. School psychology is the psychology of special ed. It's only 13 labels. And then you have clinical psychology. That's the psychology of the DSM. There's more than 400 of these. Dyslexia, bipolar, borderline, schizophrenia, ADHD, conduct disorder, they're in here. Two different worlds. Y'all got me? Yeah. Now the way that this world sneaks into the school is when you go to the school with a report from the psychologist on the outside, because we don't diagnose this stuff on the inside. This stuff in this book does not get diagnosed by the school psychologist in the school. But if you go to the psychologist down the street or at the community hospital or the mental health center and he diagnoses your child with ADHD, you bring that report to the school. If that ADHD is affecting how well the child does in school, now he can be evaluated by the school psychologist and classified as a kid with a health impairment. O-H-I, other health impairment. 
for ADHD, it could be for epilepsy, it could be for diabetes, it could be for any medical problem that adversely affects educational performance. Are you with me? Okay? So the question becomes, why do we have so many kids in special ed for ADHD? Because we got parents who don't know how to keep their mouth shut and stop telling the school everything that goes on in your child's life. Because anything you tell the school can and will be used against your son. <laughs> you stay running to the school, and they use it against you. And guess what happens? If your son is taking psychotropic meds, and you decide you don't want to give him the meds no more because you found out how dangerous it is, and I'm going to read some of the side effects in a minute on these drugs, because you're not going to believe me, so I'm going to tell you what the white folks say about their own drugs, okay? Mm -hmm. And you say, well, I don't want to give that substance to my son no more. And the school finds out that you stopped giving him the drug. Now, keep in mind, the school didn't even have a right to know you was giving him the drug in the first place. You told him that. You're big mouth. Okay? So now you decide you don't want him taking the drug no more. They find out. They call Child Protective Services. And Child Protective Services can take your child for you not giving them medicine. You know what they call it? Medical neglect. I know kids in foster care right now because black parents said I'm not giving my son that medicine no more. It's messing his head up. It's messing the way he thinks up. And they took the babies out the house. The only way the government can take possession of your child is if you allow the government to be a part of the raising of your child. Are y'all with me? The minute you go asking a white psychologist, what's wrong with my son, you done made a damn mistake right there. Because a white man don't know what's wrong with your son. Nor does he care. Only thing you're going to do is give him a drug. You do the same thing in the school. You come into the school and ask the white principal, does my son have a learning disability? What the hell are you asking him that for? <laughs> he ain't black. But because you asked him. Yes, he does. I'm going to hit him with one of these five. He's the big black five over here. Most black kids in special ed are in for one of these five. That's right. They either retarded, misdiagnosed, Emotionally disturbed, misdiagnosed. Specific learning disability, misdiagnosed. Or other health impairment, misdiagnosed. Now while we at it, let me read you the criteria for ADHD. Coming straight out the book. If you're a parent, you need to own one of these books. It's the DSM-4-TR. You cannot afford to be without it if you have a black son. DS what? DSM. DSM-IB number four, dash TR. DSM-4-TR, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, 4th edition text revision. They all look just like this. Silver with blue letters and look for the racist on the back. <laughs> Are they, I mean, they still easy to get. I mean, oh, you, you can get this off Amazon. Use copy seven bucks. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. They sell them in Borders, Barnes & Noble. Anybody can get it. You need to have it because you got to educate yourself. Because the next time somebody comes telling you your son got ADHD, you're going to open up the book, and you're going to say, okay, let me quiz you. Because <laughs> last time I checked, I thought you was a school teacher. Uh -huh. But since you want to be a psychiatrist, can you tell me what the criteria are? They don't know. The problem is ADHD is so sensationalized and all over the TV and the radio that everybody thinks they got a right to diagnose it. But legally, the only people who can diagnose this is a psychologist or a psychiatrist or a social worker or a licensed professional counselor. If you're not trained in mental health, you can't diagnose ADHD. But guess what? If you're going to let the principal tell you your child got a psychiatric condition, that's on you. If you're going to let your child's teacher tell you that your child got a psychiatric condition, that's on you. If you're going to let somebody who's trained to educate tell you how to medicate, that's on you. See that? You got to take control over your child and stop letting the teacher tell you that your son needs medicine. That's absolutely ridiculous. But we let people do it to us every day. You need to go see the psychiatrist. Is this a hospital or a school? I seem to forget. <laughs> Last time I checked, only one out of every four black boys gets a high school diploma in this country. So why don't you stop medicating and start ed educating? Because there is no research to show that putting a boy on drugs increases his likelihood of getting a diploma. Uh. They only want to sedate him and keep him quiet long enough to get rid of him. That's what this is about. They don't want nothing to do with your kids. That's why they throw him in special ed, or they put him on drugs, or they kick him out and send him to discipline school. Are you with me? Yes, That's right. Getting rid of him one way or the other. 
So mental retardation. This is a kid with an IQ that is beneath 70. Okay, IQ got to be below 70 for mentally retarded. They also have to have an impairment in adaptive behavior. Adaptive behavior is how well a child adapts in different environments and circumstances as well as other kids their age. In other words, even if your son has an IQ score below 70, I cannot classify him as retarded unless I see proof that he cannot adjust in school and in other places as well as other kids his age. That got me? I got to see a difference between that seven-year-old and all the other seven-year-olds. If the IQ score is low and I have no other proof, I can't diagnose. Why? Because all IQ tests are racially biased. So you can't use the score alone because it's racially biased. If you could use the score alone, there'd be a lot of people looking like they're retarded. So because the government realized that all these tests were founded by white racist psychologists, they say that you got to have more proof than just an IQ score. And I can tell you every year I find about a dozen black kids diagnosed retarded who never were retarded. That's right. They call it mild mental retardation. And whenever you see the word mild, that automatically should throw up a sign in your head because mild means what? They might not have it at all. <laughs> Are y'all with me? I'm serious. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. If they say mild, your first question is, how do we know this just is not a slow learning kid? What's the difference between a slow learner and mild mental retardation? Somebody's opinion. Yes, sir. Yes. Somebody's opinion. These five labels right here are socially constructed. Socially constructed. That means it is made up. And because it is made up, there's a high likelihood that kids are often misdiagnosed. Are there kids with learning disabilities? Sure. Are there black kids who are retarded? Sure. Are there black kids with autism? Sure. That's not our issue. Our issue is the, the socially constructed definition is so broad that every black child is at risk for falling in one of those. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. Yes. We ain't saying it don't exist. We saying that if you look at every black child in special ed, half of them don't belong in there. The number one reason why they're in there is because of this diagnosis. This is my diagnosis. ABT, they ain't been to hell talk. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Sure. From kindergarten to third grade, black kids are miseducated. And fourth grade through seventh grade, they special educated. Seventh through ninth grade, they are <laughs> medicated. <laughs> Tenth through twelfth, <laughs> dropped out, which is incarcerated. Okay. You see the steps? Yeah. Look, here's the question. If the black boys start getting referred to special lab primarily in the fall, they do it younger. Because I'm going to tell you now, I get phone calls to test kindergartens. Wow. Damn. <laughs> you think he got a learning disability at six? Wow. Yes. He just started learning. Yes, he just started learning. <laughs> but they want him in special lab in kindergarten. They want him in special lab in the first grade. Get him out my class. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. But I'm going to blame y'all. Because guess what? When they call you to come sign the permission to evaluate for the psychologist to test, y'all go run into the school. Where do you want me to sign? Yes. Where do you want me to sign? Yes. And y'all signing y'all kid a whole life away. Yes. Where do you want me to sign? Yes. And then you call me. And I say, what you signing for? They ask me to. So you do anything a white person asks you to do? <laughs> Is that where we at now in the hood? I know we punch drunk with white folks, but damn. You got to wake up once in a while. They do the same thing with the drugs. Same thing with the drug. We think you need to take them to the psychiatrist. Okay. Psychiatrist give you a script. Go fill it. Okay. Pharmacists tell you, get this to your child morning, afternoon, lunch. Okay. And now he walking in your room in the middle of the night with a knife in his hand talking about some mom. I see stuff flying around in my bedroom. <laughs> see that? Yes. 25% of the violence in the black community can be traced to the use of psychotropic drugs with our youth. Did you hear that? I'm not talking about the illegal street drugs. I'm talking about the legal brain drugs. Do you know that they lead to schizophrenic thoughts, homicidal thoughts, suicidal thoughts? The white folks got a whole movement against brain drugs for their kids. That's right. That's right. Sure white kids who have committed suicide and homicide while taking Paxil, while taking Zoloft, while taking Lexapro. These are antidepressants that's supposed to reduce the likelihood of suicide, but is increasing the likelihood of suicide. It's called little white demons in a jar. Emotional disturbance, don't you ever let nobody put that on your child. 
That's a child who cannot build or maintain relationships with teachers or peers. What you got? Emotional support, learning support? What you teach? What do you teach? Which support? Learning support, emotional support? All of them. You do them all primarily? I mean, a lot of kids go past LD, um, AU, um, not so much um, the B anymore, but the, the ID vibes and the um, AUs and LD and OHIs, probably more, more OHIs than anything else. More OHIs, so more the ADHD kids then. What's OHI? Other health impairment. Oh, okay. That's if you got an outside medical condition, you know. okay, and somebody feels you need special ed because of it. To me, putting the child in special ed because they was diagnosed with ADHD by an outside psychologist is a crime. Why am I receiving an inferior education just because my mother took me to a psychiatrist outside? What that got to do with my ability to learn? What does it have to do with my ability to learn? Now let's look into the criteria for ADHD. Listen to it. Often fails to give close attention to detail, has difficulty sustaining attention, does not listen when spoken to directly, does not follow through on instructions and fails to finish schoolwork, difficulty organizing tasks, avoids dislikes or is reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort, loses things necessary for tasks to be completed, easily distracted, forgetful. That's most of those. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Everybody on earth can meet the criteria for ADHD. See? That's why I'm reading it to you, because I want you to see how they hoodwink in a whole damn black community. See that? Look at that. Who don't meet that criteria for this? Especially a child. That's why every other boy is diagnosed with it. You go into a classroom, you say, who in here to take drugs? Half the hands go up. Half the hands go up. One thing you got to understand about white racism is every institution works together to destroy the family. The social services works, the medical doctor works, the school district works, the psychiatrist works, and we got to recognize this. You should not be giving your children these medicines. Now, again, emotional disturbance, don't let your child get diagnosed with that, okay? That's like a pre-prison label. This is where they put the bad kids, the ones who fight, they get emotional support, okay? If you ever been into the average emotional support classroom, and I'm sure this ain't the sister's classroom, but it already looks like a prison. they already acting like prisoners. There's no control. There's one teacher in there, maybe an aide or an assistant, a couple TSS workers, but nobody's learning nothing. The whole focus is on doing what? Keeping them from doing something dangerous so they don't hurt themselves or hurt somebody else. Kids who I do reevaluations for, everybody in special ed got to get reevaluated every three years at least. Mentally retarded kids every two years at least. Guess who have the lowest academic levels when I do my reevals? The emotional support kids, because they ain't learn nothing. The whole thing is about sitting still and obeying orders. In fact, the whole goal of public education is to do what? Domesticate the Negro boy. That's the whole goal of public education. To domesticate, to take his spirit. That's the whole purpose of public education. Black boys might not learn anything while they're in school. But they learn that the world is run by white people and it ain't a damn thing they can do about it. That's one thing they learn. If you don't believe me, ask them. They say, Mr. Johnson, I don't know how to write my name. I don't know none of that. But I know one thing. These white people are in control and not even my parents could do anything about it. And that is all they want them to know before they kick them on out. Why is that most black kids drop out in the ninth grade? Because by the time you get to the ninth grade, if you ain't mastered your academics, there ain't too many people in a high school who's really looking to help you out. By the time you get to high school, high school is like college. Everybody for himself. And so when a lot of our boys finally get to the ninth grade, they say, damn, I can't read, right? And there's nobody in here who even look like they can. Mm. So why keep coming? Yeah. There's no such thing as a dropout rate in America. There's only a push-out rate. They push our kids out of the damn school. Mm. I'm telling you because I work in the school. I'm telling you because I work in the school. And black educators, not all of them, Many of them are just as guilty as the white ones. Yes. Just as guilty as the white ones. Most of the people I fight with to keep our kids out of special education are Negroes who want that extra special ed dollar. Because you know once we put one of those labels on those kids, the school gets approximately $7,000 extra. That's right. $7,000 on top of the regular money. On top of the regular money, and you get that $7,000 every year that the child stays in special gotcha. ed. So let me ask you a question. Do we really want anybody to get the hell out? Uh, no. Nope. Let me get this right. 
Learning, average special ed class, learning support queen. How many students in the average learning support class here in Richmond? Oh, you know, where you at? Oh, you in Durham. All right, talk, tell me about Durham. How many uh, in the class? 12, 14, how many they got? 10 to 12. 10 to 12? For a small group support. Okay. I mean, if, if I'm teaching my own resource, yes, you know, but overall my kids hold up, I would say in the sixth grade, it's about 20, 25 kids that are labeled as special. But that's your whole caseload. But in the class together, when you act, because the caseload is larger than that actual class that you teach, probably about 10 of them at a time, max. Okay, so let's go with the 10, right? There's 10 kids per special ed class on average. So that means 7,000 times 10 is an extra $70,000 a year. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. An extra $70,000 a year per that 10 to the district. So now, Umar Johnson, the school psychologist, comes in, and I'm testing these 10 kids who have already been in special ed for a couple years, right? And I'm finding, no ain't nothing, not only do I find no improvement, I find that ain't nothing wrong with him, ain't nothing wrong with him, ain't nothing wrong with him. He might be ADHD, but he's smart. He needs to get out. This one over here, y'all said was retarded. It's not. Just a slow learner. He get out. You see what I'm doing? I'm taking kids out of special ed. You know what that affects? The money. The budget. Money, yeah. And if I take too many kids out of special ed, guess what? Somebody Some of the special ed money. teachers going to be laid off. Did y'all see that? Yeah. I'm going to be laid off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only difference is what? I can't be laid off because Umar Johnson works for himself. Wow. <laughs> I resigned from the school district of Philadelphia. I resigned. Most of my colleagues thought I was crazy. They said, you're the youngest of only five black men in the fifth largest school district in America. You make good money. You got excellent benefits. One day you'll probably be in charge of all the psychologists. What's wrong with you to be leaving? I said, because every day I come to work, my whole job is nothing but a fight. Fighting to keep black kids out of special ed who don't need it. Who are only being sent in there because the white teachers don't want to teach them and the Negro principals don't care about them. So I'm leaving. It ain't been back since. That's right. That's right. That's right. So why is it just black boys? Is it black girls too? Black girls too. Okay, but okay. the intent is to destroy the male. That's right. You so destabilize a community by killing the, the male. male. Sisters right. are under attack by white racism as well. But it's done differently. Right. But the male is the direct frontal assault. Mm -hmm. The direct frontal assault. So we got to recognize that you always go for the male. In the 1980s, the United States government put money into a program called... F-A-V-I, Federal Anti-Violence Initiative. Federal Anti-Violence Initiative. Do black men have a gene that predisposes us to commit violence? Y'all remember that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they said we had a gene. I said, yeah, the Willie Lynch chip. They said we had a gene <laughs> that made us kill each other. And they put millions of dollars into research to prove that black men had a gene that made us violent. Ain't nobody say nothing about racism. Ain't nobody say nothing about economic castration. Ain't nobody say nothing about slavery. Ain't nobody say nothing about miseducation. They blamed it on the biology. Why? Because whenever you can medicalize a social problem, you can get rich off of it. Whenever you can medicalize a social problem, you can get rich off of it. If we said that this whole ADHD thing could be eliminated by giving black men role models, mentors, and their fathers back, then guess what? Wall Street, who makes $45 billion a year off black brain drugs for black boys, $45 billion a year off brain drugs for black boys. If we said all they need is a man in their life, guess what? They start losing money. So they got to make sure that they do what? Keep anybody quiet who tries to say that it ain't the brain's fault. ADHD is supposed to be the brain's fault. Conduct is sort of supposed to be the brain's fault. These ain't psychiatric problems. These are sociological, black community, black family, direct racial assault problems. See that? Stop letting people medicalize everything. And we fought, we fell all into it. We fell all into it. Well, yeah, well, maybe he is ADHD. I mean, first of all, when somebody tells you a child is ADHD, the first thing you got to ask yourself, is the teacher an effective instructor? Because if you are a boring ass teacher, <laughs> nobody wants to be in your class. <laughs> you understand? And we assume that the teacher told us the truth. Oh, she said Raheem is too active. He can't sit still. I got to take him to see a psychiatrist. 
Time out. Did you hire anybody to go into the classroom to observe Raheem to see whether or not what the teacher said was legitimate, right and exact? No, I never did that. So you mean to tell me you're going through all this running around, about to put your son on dangerous mind-altering drugs because somebody said so? The average black boy on psychotropics is on psychotropics because the teacher said so. And that's what we do as a community. We run because the teacher said so. But guess what? We like labels too. Why do we like labels? Because number one, we can get some SSI money. Uh, come on now. Cash for crazies. Cash for crazies. Cash for crazies. That's right. And you can get SSI money for the special ed kids. Dollars for dummies. That's it. Dollars for dummies. Dollars for dummies. I had a black girl in Philadelphia a couple years ago. I reevaluated. She was a senior in high school. She went through the whole grade school. They said she was retarded. I tested this girl. Nothing was retarded about her. I called the mother up. Say, Miss So and So, I got some really good news. She said, What? I said, Guess what? Your daughter is not only not retarded, but she never has been. She said, Damn. You know what she said? <laughs> you must be wrong. You must have gave her the wrong test. My daughter been retarded all her life. She fought me tooth and nail. Do you know why? Because retarded kids get the highest SSI money. She fought me for the label because she would have lost her SSI check and the retarded label gets you the most money. She's been hustling her daughter for 13 years and don't want to give the check back. That's right, Negroes. Not white people, Negroes. Okay? Special education only was birthed so that white folks could resegregate the black kids from the white kids. Period. So then people say, well, what about an all-black school? It ain't no white kids in there. So what's the whole purpose behind special ed in an all-black school if it ain't no white kids to keep them away from? It's real. Number one, it's the cash. Number two, if the teacher don't want to be bothered, they can throw them in special ed full-time, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, because when the feds come in and look at your records and they see that a kid is in special ed all day, you better be able to justify that, because no child should be in special ed all day unless they have a very serious impairment. For example, if you got children who are severely and profoundly retarded, severely or profoundly emotionally disturbed, severely or profoundly autistic, then you could possibly justify special ed all day. These kids over here, orthopedically impaired, traumatic brain injury, deaf, blind kids, they'll probably be in special ed all day because if you're blind, you're going to need that support all day. You can't see at all. If you're deaf, you're going to need that support all day. You can't hear at all. But if you got a socially constructed label, how the hell you justify them being in special ed all day? See, special ed child has a right to two things. A free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. A free and appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment. These two clauses you must absolutely remember because 99% of all special ed lawsuits are fought because of one of those two clauses. A free and appropriate public education Free, you don't pay for it. Appropriate. Who decides what's appropriate? That's, right. that's, the, that's, that's, that, that's, the, that's, that's, that's the word they fight over. Mm -hmm. The school district's lawyers say what we're doing for your kid is appropriate. The mother say, hell no, he's been in special ed for five years and still can't read. That education can't possibly be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Appropriate is about what you're willing to fight for. IEP. And guess what? IEP. Well, IEP is the program that every special ed child gets. Yeah. Everybody got me? Individual. For example, if we all in 12th grade, we all are taught on the what? GEC, General Education Curriculum. We get the same math, we get the same science, we get the same history, but the minute they say he got a learning disability, okay, he don't get taught on the GEC no more for that subject. In other words, he still gets everything else like everybody else. If his learning disability is in math, he still get the same science, he still get the same reading, y'all with me? Yeah. But his math is no longer graded on the general ed standard. It's now on his IEP, Individual wow. Education Plan. And so the IEP team, and who is members of the IEP team? Teacher. The teacher, the regular ed teacher, who teaches the kid. Special ed teacher, who's going to teach the kid. The LEA, which is the principal or designee, normally the assistant principal, the special ed liaison, and the parent. parent. And the parent. Y'all mess up because y'all keep letting everybody tell y'all what they're going to teach your child. Yeah. You are a designated member of the team. And you don't let the team meet unless you that. Now guess who's not on the team? Who's not mandated? The child. The, the child ain't mandated until they get to high school. Once yeah. they get 14, they can come. 
okay? Some states 12, right? But you can bring them anytime if you feel it's appropriate, okay? Who tested your child? Who put them in special oh, ed to begin with? Oh, the school psychologists. But we're not mandated to be there. This is the first yeah. mistake we make as yeah. black parents. Yeah. Because what y'all have to say is I understand the school psychologist ain't mandated, but I want him there. I want the person who told me my child was retarded to explain to me how he came up with that. Yeah. I want the person who told me that my child was emotionally disturbed to explain to me how he came up with that. I want the one who said my child had a learning disability in reading to explain to me how he came up with that. So when you go to the meeting and the psychologist ain't there, you know what you say? We got to reschedule. I'm not going for it. And I see the queen smiling because you know the school staff ain't feeling that too much. She may not mind. But, I, 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 right. I don't know. Like you said, it's my, it might not be mandated, but it is best practice. So best practice. There you go. Schools, but I'm see, you care about the children, so you're going to say, fine. Bring him on in. But the average white folk is some Negro. They're going to say, well, he's too busy. He's off testing other kids. And then you say, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see that? They see that? Or, let me tell you what they do that's really disrespectful. Really disrespectful when they call you up and say the IEP is already done. Ooh! Are you with me? Are you with me? Are y'all with me? And then, well, hold tight, hold tight. Y'all think they doing y'all a favor because you're like, you mean I ain't got to show up? I ain't got to come? I ain't got to take off from work? It's already done. All I got to do is pick it up and sign it? You're like, that works for me. That's an insult. Because they wouldn't do that to no white parent. No. The white parent, they're going to invite you in, sit you down, you're going to go through the document. But for black parents, come in and sign and you can go on in your own way. You see that? The connotation is you don't care about your own child's education. And then when your child don't learn nothing, we look at the IEP and we look at the goals and we see why. You say his goal, the progress he's supposed to make from this day to this day next year, 365, he already knows that. So if your son has already mastered the goal, what is he learning for the whole school year? Not a damn thing. How to be a good nigga. You see? And that's why so many black children go in special ed, they never get out. And you got to realize when you put your child in special ed, he may never get back up to grade level unless he has an IEP team that cares about him. Okay? Do you know that there's not one, one long-term outcome study on special education to demonstrate that it actually benefits the kids it serves. Did you hear what I just said? Special ed been around since 1975. That's 37 years. There's not one long-term study. This is a national program. There's not one long-term study to demonstrate that special ed actually benefits the kids that it serves. That's right. There's no outcome studies on special education, not longitudinal to long-term. Now, some states have done their own, but as a federal program, there's no documentation to show beyond a shadow of a doubt that this works. It is a 37-year-old experiment that needs to be thrown in the trash. The reason why they're going to be thrown in the trash is because of this right here. Too much money is being made off special ed. The school psychologists getting paid off special ed. The speech therapists speech getting paid off special ed. The occupational therapists getting paid off paid off special ed. Okay? See? Everybody's hustling the special ed kids. Black failure is the most profitable business in America. Find a black problem and milk it to death and you will get rich. The problem is all the people getting paid off black problems are white people. They know more about you than you do. Now autism. <laughs> autism is a communications impairment. It is not intellectual. You can be autistic and retarded, or you can be autistic and not retarded. Don't assume that an autistic kid is retarded. I do a lot of work legally around black kids who are uh, put in life skills classes, which are classes for mentally retarded children primarily. But they're autistic. They're not retarded. But many people in the world of special ed, because they don't understand mental health, they will put an autistic kid with the retarded kids, are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who's not retarded. Mm -hmm. Because they think autism means retardation. Autism is a communication impairment. The inability to effectively communicate verbally or non-verbally. Y'all know what the non-verbal is, right? You talking to the autistic kid and he just staring at you. 
Or not staring me. at you. Or, or not staring at you. Or you bring your autistic kid in a room full of kids and the first thing he do is run into the corner and stay to himself because he don't know how to communicate, to interact, to socialize. That's what autism is. I know autistic kids who are gifted. I know autistic kids who are retarded. I know autistic kids who are average. Don't assume one is the other. Specific learning disability has eight types. Eight types of SLD. What are the eight types? Now, this word S, this word S is important. It's almost an eight. Okay. Because before it used to just be LD. <laughs> learning disabled. There is no more LD. There is no more LD. It is now SLD. Specific learning disability. And it must be specific to one of eight categories. It must be specific to one of eight categories. Somebody give you a report, say your child is LD, and it doesn't tell you which subcategory, okay? That's an unethical, illegal report. It must categorize. But I can tell you, psychologists who don't know the current regulations are still calling kids LD. It's up to you as the parent to be educated. What are the eight subtypes? Dyslexia. No, ma'am. <laughs> Dyslexia is not a special ed diagnosis. Now, a child can be diagnosed with dyslexia, right? and put in special ed, but the special ed category won't be dyslexia. The special ed category will be one of the eight. So for dyslexia, it depends on the form, but it will probably be basic reading skill, or written expression, or reading fluency. See, dyslexia is a clinical label. Okay. It's not one of the 13. Uh -huh. You follow me? Mm -hmm. But if you're dyslexic, you're going to get special ed help as a dyslexic child with a specific learning disability for basic reading skills. So it's the learning that the dyslexia affects. Exactly. It's the learning. There you go. Okay. Just like the ADHD kid. You're not getting special ed as an ADHD kid. You're getting special ed as an ADHD kid who has a other health impairment. You must always put the special ed label on in order for them to get the help. Basically, you just change the term. So the dyslexia is still being in the report. You follow me? Uh -huh. It'll still be there, but your category, your category that qualifies you for special ed ain't the dyslexia but the specific learning disability. Yeah, but don't they um, specifically alter uh, or create your Stay with me, though. Stay with me, IEP though. based on the They do. Dyslexia? They do. But your service comes because you were diagnosed with one of the 13. Yeah. You can't add anything extra. Okay. The, 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 the dyslexia, go, no, you don't ignore the dyslexia. Mm -hmm. But in order to get service, you must have one of the 13. Dyslexia is not one of the 13. So if I evaluate a kid who's dyslexic, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to get service as a kid with a specific learning disability for basic re In other words, the dyslexia is affecting what skin? But so it probably... Does it affect all skin? Like, does it affect my math because that's turned around? It can. Not around. automatically. Uh -huh. Not automatically, it can. But again, if it does, uh -huh. you're only going to get the service under these labels. Everybody follow me. Yeah. you got to go because it's all legal. Uh -huh. And in legal terms, you got to have the term. You right. can't say, I want my child to get special ed for dyslexia. Okay, she has dyslexia, she needs special ed, but she can't get it just by saying dyslexia. She has to be evaluated by the school psychologist or the evaluation team and found to have one of these 13. Now, you just said the dyslexia affects her math. So if the dyslexia affects her math and I find that it's sufficient to warrant special ed help, then it will be specific learning disability for math computation or for math reasoning. But dyslexia is not a school psychology diagnosis. Y'all got me. Just like ADHD is not. For example, for a dyslexic kid, you can be specific learning disability for basic reading skill, for reading fluency, for reading comprehension, for math calculations, for math reasoning, for written expression, for oral expression, for listening comprehension. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because you have to read in every subject, you have to. Now, but here's the thing. What, which of these eight areas does it affect? That's how you qualify for the special ed. You only qualify for special ed because of this. You can't bring nothing extra in. We're going to look at that dyslexia. It'll be on the report. In other words, to you, it'll look like she's getting the special ed for the dyslexia. Because in a way, she is. But in order to qualify, you must be classified as one of the 13 categories. So then it's true that it's like... Um Attention deficit disorder can affect one subject, but not the other. Now remember, if you get ADHD, you're not being diagnosed with a learning disability. I understand. You're being diagnosed with a health impairment. But I'm, I'm saying, if, if, if you don't have it, if it doesn't affect all of your subjects. No, that's not true. No, no, no. ADHD doesn't have to affect your learning at all. 
But I'm saying oh, kids aren't diagnosed with ADHD because they're not learning. They're diagnosed with ADHD because they get on the white teacher's nerves. I understand, but I'm okay. saying <laughs> if you have a, a disorder, a learning disorder, right. I would think it would have been a But ADHD learning. is not a learning disorder. Okay, but I'm saying a learning disorder. I just used that. Earlier. I got you. I got you. So I would think that it would affect your learning all the way across no, the board. No, no. How no. does a learning disorder just affect one or two subjects? Well, no. One or two things. When because you, you don't learn how to read the right same way you learn how to do math. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You don't learn how to read the same way you learn how to do math. The way you do math is not the same way you learn how to write. What you're talking about is the mistake that education has been making up until like the last 20 years. They had a general LD, remember? You were LD and everything. If you couldn't read, we assumed that you was LD and everything. So they just said, he LD, she LD. And then they said, wait a minute, the way you learn to read ain't the way you learn to do math. The way you learn to do math ain't the way you learn to write. So why are we making them LD for everything? That's when they came up with eight core academic areas. Now you are specific, specific learning disability for basic reading skill, your ability to decode words, reading fluency, your ability to read at the rate of conversational language. Everybody got me there. Fluency is your ability to read it. I should be able to read as smoothly as I'm talking. That's fluency. But um, for me, if I found a child who was really good at math and mm -hmm. understood the principles of math and computation and so forth and so on, I could apply, I automatically could apply his ability to, to the way his brain worked in math to his reading to improve his reading. So you might be able to do that for that child, but you can't generalize it. Okay, but I'm saying um, to generalize it the other way is... Well, we're not generalizing here. We're, okay. we're segmenting now. Specific, specific now. Yeah. But I'm saying to say that, okay, this child has a learning disability in reading, right. but he's really great in math. It's like saying the child can't learn reading. No, not well. true. I know a lot of kids who got reading problems who are great in math. Yeah. I know a lot of kids who are great in math who got reading problems. I know a lot of children who have, who have a way of learning in math that can assist so, them in I agree learning in reading and, I agree and vice versa. And I agree with you, so but it's not true for every child, though. A child learns, but remember now, it's not true for every child. Okay. See, that's why every kid gets their own evaluation. Uh -huh. If everybody in here got a reading problem, I'm evaluating everybody in here individually. Uh -huh. I'm not assuming that the way you learn is the way he learns. I'm not assuming the way he learns is the way she learns is going to be different. Right. Now, I can use your math strength to help your reading. I can use his math strength to help his reading. No, you can use something else because everybody can't learn. That's oh, no, of course learn. everybody can learn. Of course. Yeah, and sure. Of course, yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm not saying that. I just don't want you to assume that because they struggle in one area, they struggle in the others. And I don't want you to assume just because they're good in one area that that's necessarily going to help them in the other either. Okay. Every child has their own learning profile, right. which is why they all get that individual education plan. If they really have a learning disability. Because what I'm finding is too many of our kids ain't got none of this. Right. They just sloppy and lazy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Did y'all hear what I just said? Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Half the black kids in special ed are just lazy or ain't been taught. Or bored. Or bored or ain't been taught. And you know, you know what I do? If I know there's a kid who don't need special ed, you know what I, I tell them? I say, guess what? Do you think you LD? No. Do you want to go in the learning support classroom? No, well, guess what? Your teachers think you slow. Your mother think you slow. And you know what we're about to do? I'm about to test you. So if you don't want to go in there, you better do your best. And guess what? They do their best. The scores come out, and everybody look at me like I'm crazy. That boy did this? Yes, he did. You see that? See that? I'll let the kids know. If you don't want to, and the reason you know why I do that? Because guess who has the highest dropout rate? Black boys in special ed. Why? Because of the stigmatization that I'm not as smart as everybody else. Man, that is the greatest side effect to special ed. That's why the kids don't come to school no more. And then once all the other kids in the school building find out who the LD kids are, it's over. Self-esteem is shot. And nobody's supposed to know anyway. That's supposed to be confidential. But they got a way of finding out. Okay? So that's how that is. ADHD. Let me talk about some of the side effects of the drugs. Then we're going to wrap it up and I'll take a couple questions. Also, Go back to the first three things you said about the, about the black man. And the last one was homosexualization. Miseducation is number one. Okay. Psychotropic medication is number two. Incarceration is number three. Extermination.
miseducation, psychotropic medication, incarceration, frustration and isolation, which leads to extermination. Homosexualization is part of stage one, the miseducation. Why are so many black boys in jail, so many juveniles? You know why? Because in Go ahead, because Queen every arrest, for every arrest, the Federal Reserve pays three thousand dollars per month to every court case. Okay, that's that's a part of it. Another so part of it is this: question? the reason why we see so many young black boys going to jail as juvenile offenders, adjudicated, because technically until you're 18, you didn't commit a crime, so you get adjudicated. But see, what happened was, remember, for most of American history, they didn't want juveniles in prisons with men because they said it would just corrupt them more. But in 1980, when the Federal Anti-Violence Initiative said that we had a gene that predisposed us to violence, white folks said, what's the use of rehabilitating black kids if they, they are predetermined to commit crime? So they said, we don't need no juvenile detention centers. We need to just go ahead and lock them up with their fathers. Wow. Y'all see that? The white boys, what do they do with them? House arrest, therapy, treatment, learn a trade, get a mentor, black boys jail. Why? We can't do nothing for you, black man. We heard that you have a gene that makes you kill regardless of how much help we give you. Y'all see that? It's the eugenics. That's it. Racial extermination through science. Racial extermination through a pseudoscience that ain't even real. Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said the whole world is run on a bluff. Okay? Now, Reading comprehension, the ability to understand what you read, right? Now, let me tell you where we mess up. Our kids can be cold. They might even be fluent. But we stop at fluency. A lot of our kids cannot comprehend what they read. You know why? Because we mistake reading fast for reading well. If we know a kid who can speed read, zoom, 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 we say he's a good reader. Then you ask them a question. What did you read? What, what was the moral of the story? No comprehension. I don't know. <laughs> because the whole black community is celebrating kids for being what? Good decoders, but not being good comprehenders. The whole purpose for reading is to do what? Pull meaning from the text. So if you're not pulling meaning from the text, you're not a good reader. I don't care how fast you can read through the passage. Make sure your children can understand what they read because that's the biggest reason for why black kids are trailing white and Asian kids on standardized testing. They don't understand the question. If they understood the questions, they might have got it right. But they didn't understand the question because we're not making them do it. When you're riding with your child in the car, you give them a newspaper, you make them read it, you take the newspaper away, and you make them memorize what they're reading so they can answer some questions. If they can't do that, they're going to struggle on standardized tests. That's right. No comprehension. Math calculation. This is basic. Add, subtract, divide, multiply. Math reasoning, that's the ability to decide on the operation and then complete it. That's normally a word problem. What do I do? And then do it. Written expression, that's either spelling or your written language. And that's something else we got to work on. Our high schoolers can't spell. And you know why? Because they text us so much, they got a whole new language called text. Laugh out loud and shaking my damn head and this and that and da 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 da. And they putting that stuff in their essays. They think LOL is a part of standard English. Yes. Yes. And y'all not teaching them no different. So we got kids who are being rejected on the college application because what? In the personal statement, they got all type of texting acronyms. See that? We're not raising our kids no more. We're letting the cell phone raise them. Okay? Oral expression, the ability to articulate. Uh, listening comprehension, the ability to comprehend what you hear. Okay, those are the eight types of the learning disability. Now, speech and language impairment, this child is a special ed child, but they don't go into a special ed class. They get speech therapy by the speech pathologist. This is a child who might stutter a whole lot. They got a lisp where they have difficulty understanding spoken language. Okay, receptive language, the ability to understand, or expressive language, the ability to articulate. You don't go into special ed class most of the time. You simply get help with the speech therapist. But I'm going to tell you right now, if your child is getting therapy from the speech therapist, you better make sure the speech therapist is working with your child. Because I know black kids who've been in speech therapy since kindergarten and they ain't made no progress because the speech therapist ain't working with them. But they writing up their notes as if they yes. did. They writing up their notes as if they did. Y'all with me? Yeah. Wow. And they still getting the 7000 Of course. 
The minute, the minute, the minute I say your child got a disability and needs special ed, they type the name in the computer. It gets sent up to Washington D.C., also to the state capital of uh, Virginia, and that money gets generated. And the problem with the special ed money is what? I don't have a problem with the fact that you get extra money to teach the special ed kids. The problem is the money don't get spent on the special ed kids. Guess who get the Guess who get the money? The football team for new uniforms. The basketball team for new rims. The teachers, so everybody get a new computer. The staff day, they use the money on everything but the kids, they got it. And that's why the black parents of Richmond have to organize yourselves into a powerful, effective black parent union. A union! Because the only way you can fix it is through organized black parent power. And I'm going to tell you who you got to put weight on. Your black state senators and your black state reps. Because education is controlled by the state. You do not have a United States constitutional right to go to school. No, sir. Not at all. The United States Constitution is a criminal document. It doesn't deal with education. It deals with slavery. Okay? You have a state right to go to school. So who controls state law? The state legislature. Your state senators and your state reps. When's the last time you asked them a question about education in the state? That's right. That's right. Even your mayor don't even have so much control over the schools. It's the state legislature. But you got to organize the black parents, y'all. That's the way you get it done. Because there's no way you're going to be able to fight with the teachers' union. Because they powerful. All the teachers belong to the teachers' union, including the black ones. Now, some of the black ones are going to step off for the, for, to fight for their kids. But the average black teacher is scared of the white teacher union, so they're going to stay in line and shook and drive. Not our sisters over here. We know that. Okay? But I'm going to tell you, the teachers' union got a lot of power. And the one thing we have to do is we have to eliminate the provision that says if you've been teaching for three years, you're going to have your job for the rest of your life. If you've been teaching for three years, you will have your job until you decide to retire, no matter how bad of a teacher you are. Did you know that? In Richmond, how many years is it before you get tenure? I'm sorry, Queen. How many years before you get tenure? Three years. You heard that? Three or four. What is it in Richmond? How many years before you get tenure? You remember, Michelle? You see that? It's normally three or four. Three or four years, you're going to have your job for the rest of your life, benefits and everything, no matter how bad you teach. Wow. Traumatic brain injury. Y'all know what that is? A kid who's been in a car accident or they got to wear a helmet. If you got young children, you got to make sure they're not playing too roughly outside because a lot of our babies are hitting their head on the monkey bars and it's causing neurological brain damage. And you don't see it right away, but it comes up later. Your daughter running through the monkey bars and she hit her head and she get up and she cry, you give her a hug and you go on, right? Five years later, she can't even walk in a straight line or she can't remember anything or she's stuttering when she talks. And you're like, she ain't used to do that. And they say, well, has she ever hit her head before? Remember, the human brain don't stop growing until you're about 30 years old. So we got to protect those baby skulls until they start growing. Okay, I know they got big heads, that African head, but it's real delicate in there. Okay? Deafness, blindness, deafness with blindness, multiple disabilities. It only means you got more than one. Okay? And then developmental delay. Hearing impairment. Okay? In a lot of states, hearing impairment and deafness actually go together. Or the blindness and the visual impairment can go together sometimes as well. Sometimes the deafness and the uh, hearing impairment can go together. Sometimes the states play with that. But you're still looking at 12, 13 educational disabilities. Okay? If you ever have an issue with your child, all you have to do is send me an email telling me what's going on with the child. Don't sign nothing. Stop signing stuff that white people give you. Okay? You'll sign yourself back into slavery, half of you, because you don't read nothing. Okay? My cards are on that table over there. You want to get my card? Keep it with you. Psychotropic drugs. Leave it. Oh, I didn't give y'all none of the side effects. How I'll leave it out. And then I'm going to wrap up after this. Let's talk about Adderall. Adderall is one of the ADHD labels. By the way, there is no more ADD, right? We know that, right? ADD was eliminated. There's only ADHD. Primarily hyper, primarily inattentive, combined, or ADHD NOS. ADD don't, no longer exists. Just like LD no longer exists, is SLD. What are the side effects for Adderall? I'm not making this up. This is coming straight out of PDR. Latest version, here we go. Depression, dry mouth, heart attack, high blood pressure, sexual impotence, overstimulation, rapid heartbeat, 
seizures, stomach intestinal disturbance, stroke, sudden death, weight loss, diarrhea, dizziness, fever, viral infection, insomnia, mood swings, nausea, nervousness, vomiting, weakness. Well, that one, um, that, that would have been enough. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. No, but, but, but here's the thing. When the doctor writes that prescription, do they tell you that? No. In fact, the next time a teacher tells you your son needs meds, read it a list and say, would you give it to your child? Well, Rodney takes it, but good for Rodney. My son ain't taking no damn drugs. Come on. I'm going to give y'all another one. Here we go. This is Risperdal. Now, Risperdal is an antipsychotic. You give it to schizophrenics. So, and we know that schizophrenia doesn't develop until your early 30s, right? So let me ask you a question. If schizophrenia doesn't develop until your early 30s, how is it that we got seven-year-old kids taking Risperdal? Because the antipsychotic medicines are also mood stabilizers. The antipsychotic medicines are also mood stabilizers. So they're giving black kids schizophrenic meds to make them do what? Calm down. So the boys with the anger problems and the fighting problems, they're giving them Risperdal and Depakote. Powerful antipsychotics to force their brain to calm the body down. Now, what are some of the side effects for Risperdal? Agitation, anxiety, constipation, dizziness, hallucination, headache, indigestion, insomnia, irregular heartbeat, runny nose, sleepiness, vomiting, weight change. Last one I'm going to give you. Do you see all the problems you cause by trying to stop one? Ritalin. Uh -oh. Listen to this. Most important fact about this drug, Ritalin. Excessive doses of Ritalin over a long period of time can produce addiction. Wow. It is also possible to develop a tolerance to Ritalin so that the larger doses are needed to produce the original effect. Larger doses are needed to produce an original effect. Larger doses are needed to produce the original effect. Because of these dangers, be sure to check with your doctor before making any change in dosage. And only withdraw the drug under your doctor's supervision. Ritalin is classified by the Drug Enforcement Agency of the United States of America as a Schedule II drug, which means it's just as addictive as crack cocaine. It is pharmacologically the same thing, 100%, as the illegal street drug speed. Speed and Ritalin are one and the same. Kids sell this medicine in the schoolyard for $5. And guess what happens? When your insurance runs out, when they get 18 or 21 years old, and they're so used to getting high for the past 15 years, and your insurance ain't paying for it no more, guess what happens then? They become a regular street drug addict. All these drugs serve as gateways to the illegal drugs. Kill them before they grow. Any questions? Queen. I love it. I need a cup of water if I can. You were focusing on the black brothers and how you know, everything set up to basically here. Exterminate. They are getting the boys without the moms, but the problem is that the parents are compliant in it because of their ignorance. You see, ultimately the number one weapon being used against a single parent black mother so they can get at her son is her stress. You work two jobs, you raising five kids by yourself, I'm the principal, I'm black, I'm from the hood, but I forgot all that, my wife is white, I live in the suburbs now, right? And I'm calling you every day to come and pick him up early because he's getting on our school's nerves. So every time you come up to get your son, guess what? You got to take off from the job. You got to take off from the job. So now you're getting no.